I think he understands. I think we all understand that there needs to be a changing of the page from 2023. He needs his guys on the coaching staff, and, and that's right. And kind of a partial exodus has begun. James Campen out from his offensive line coaching job. Chris Tabor informed he won't be needed for his special teams coaching job. Thomas Brown out from his offensive co- coordinator job. That's fine. I like it. Part of me thinks, you know, through no fault of some of theirs, everybody involved with last year should be gone. Right? Senior assistant Jim Caldwell, who actually sat in on interviews, uh, according to some reports, including ESPN, uh, who sat in on interviews during the Panthers' coaching search, is expected to be retained. Uh, Evero is reportedly still being blocked from interviewing for defensive coordinator jobs elsewhere, uh, which they can do because he's still under contract as the defensive coordinator here uh, in Carolina. So there's still some guys that are in the mix to retain. There's there's a few points of this that I think are important. I don't like anyone that's been in town longer than Canales. For the simple fact of they've had a relationship with Tepper longer than they've had a relationship with Canales, Mm -hmm. unless Dan Morgan is who they are most loyal to. Right. My 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 thing is the loyalty has to run through someone other than Tepper based on the reports we've gotten from this past season, right? There was the the athletic report that had assistant coaches going around everybody and, and tattling to the yeah. owner. Yeah, going bypassing Frank Reich, either going to Fitterer, the former GM, or like you said, to David Tepper directly, saying like, "I don't think they're, I don't think they're developing Bryce right. I don't think they have the right plan to develop Bryce." And and those conversations, even if they're honest and critical, need to be had with the coach, and probably with the coach and the GM, right? If you're an assistant coach who they pay to have an opinion on the offense, right? You're a position coach on offense, and you think there's some glaring hole with how you're developing one of your young players, that's not a conversation that should be had in the dark, in the corners, in the shadows with the owner or with the GM. That's one that's had in the light in an offensive meeting room with the head coach and probably the offensive coordinator and maybe the GM. And if the owner wants to sit in and listen, feel free, you pay the the electricity bill. So part of me wants to say, get all the old blood out of town. Right, get everybody that that was involved in that Game of Thrones backstabbing style out of town. I don't like that they've been in town longer than Canales, but I'll I'll flip it a little bit, which will open the door for somebody like Caldwell to stick around, or for someone like Evero to stay around if they are deemed the 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 right person for the job. They have to be more loyal to Canales than David Tepper, which means they have to know that Canales was not forced to keep them, right? Because if it comes out that David Tepper told Canales, maybe even during the interview the interview process, hey, if you take this job, we'll offer it to you, but if we're going to offer it to you, you have to do everything you can to keep uh, Edgero Evero. Well, then guess who Evero's like, appreciative of? Guess who he's thanking? Tepper, right? Yeah. It needs to be, hey, if you want to keep Evero, fantastic. If you want to keep Caldwell, love it. If you don't, that's fine too. That way it's your decision to keep them. And when they right, send the handwritten thank you note after the email or after the, the offered letter comes in, they're sending it to Canales. He has to be the guy with the loyalty. And but quite frankly, that's what we've heard is the good about Canales is you hang out with him and you just you like him. You want to play for him. You want to uh, uh, you know be a part of his success. He's Pete Carroll Jr. We had Scott Reynolds from Pewter Report who covers the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where Canales is coming from being the offensive coordinator. He said this guy is known as Pete Carroll Jr. Pete Carroll seems to be one of those guys that if you coach for him, you're like indebted to him for life just on how awesome you think he is. Matter of fact, Canales followed him from USC to Seattle and uh, bloomed with 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 uh, empowerment that was given to him by Pete Carroll. So he sees how loyalty works. You know, Chris Tabor is seen as a very good special teams coach. There were games this year for the Panthers where some of the only highlights were punt returns <laughs> or uh, – they also had some miscues, don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. But uh but there were some some games where it was like, hey, if the special teams didn't do anything, they didn't do anything. But I get get him out. 
He's, he doesn't have to be loyal to Canales. Mm-hmm. And loyalty to Canales becomes very, very important from this point forward. I need everything streamlined. We talk about the four horsemen of the franchise, owner, GM, head coach, quarterback. All of the branches need to come out from those, right? You can't have a branch that like goes from Bryce Young and then reattaches to the tree up at the ownership. That just that looks funny. That's not how trees work. If you want to get real into the, the analogy, we don't need any vines. Nothing crawling in all different directions. Just branches going out of that main trunk. Well, one thing to keep in mind is that Campen and Tabor were actually part of Matt Rule's staff. Exactly. So, so, that, so there's like there's like the holdover from a couple staffs ago. So maybe that is Campen making the decision because Campen did have to coach against Evero's defense twice this upcoming mm-hmm. year, and he's probably like, yeah, that defense is really good. I want to keep that guy. Uh, you mean Canales had to coach? Yeah, against Canales. Evero. Yeah, Canales yeah. coaching against Evero. And it, he's like, yeah, I want to. I want to keep that guy. It's. It's. I actually think one of the big problems with the Frank Wright coaching staff is that they put together this all-star coaching staff, but they didn't. They didn't always seem like they trusted each other, got along, vibed. Uh, it was it was all of these big names who were very good at their individual jobs, but just like it, you know, the offensive line depends on the running backs. The offensive line coach depends on the the running backs coach. You all have to be in the same mix. That's what I, I think is most important here. And if you, that means you have to move on from some good coaches, that means you have to move on from some good coaches. Just do everything you possibly can to replace those good coaches. With other good coaches, right? That's there's there's a lot of good football minds out there. Make sure you find the ones that fit rather than just the best. Right? Think of it like a basketball team, right? How many super teams have we seen just not work at all, especially as of late? And an all-star at every position. If they don't like each other, it ain't gonna work.